Hi people, I want to start off today by talking about starter motors. I want to have a look at them, I want to pull one apart, and I want to show you one of them working. These two starter motors are from two different brands of vehicles, but they have a lot of similarity, as do all starter motors. At the top, they have a part that we call a solenoid. The lower section is the actual motor itself. Looking at the two ends of these, you can see that the structure and the design and the construction of both of these starter motors are quite similar. Looking here at the electrical connectors on the end of the solenoid, there's a terminal post here for the heavy duty cabling. We also have another small connector. That's the wiring that powers the solenoid itself. And then there's another connector that comes out here, which is the second half of the solenoid switch that sends power to the electrical motor. Now looking at the second starter motor that I have with me today, we can still see that there's the two main solenoid switch posts. Here's the smaller post that powers the solenoid. The setup is much the same as the first one we looked at, and you'll find that 90% of starter motors look very similar to this. Looking at the other end of the starter motor, we can see what we call the pinion gear. This gear engages with the teeth that are on the flywheel to rotate the engine in order to get it to start. These teeth should be in good condition, Typically you can turn the starter motor in one direction, but it's very difficult to turn it in the other direction. Here, the second starter motor that I have, there's a different type of housing, but the pinion gear is still visible there. To start the disassembly process, I want to remove the solenoid first. This begins by removing the 12mm nut and then the washer that secure the heavy duty electrical connector for the starter motor. Once this is done, it's then onto the screws that secure the solenoid onto the housing. Once the screws have been loosened and taken out, it's time to remove the solenoid from the housing. Now you want to be very careful when you do this because there's a number of parts to the solenoid and they can just fall free or fall out as you remove it. Looking here, we have the actual solenoid. There's a black plastic sealing ring on this particular model. As we're looking back to the starter motor itself, we can see there's a plunger here and a spring. Make sure these get all reassembled in the way that they came out. Looking now at this plunger and its operation, we can see that it moves in and out, and as it moves in and out, it in turn moves the pinion gear in and out to engage with the flywheel of the engine. If this is any way seized or sticking or not operating smoothly, you're going to have issues with your starter motor and starting problems with your car. Now here I've just removed the plunger and I want to see how well it slides in this solenoid housing. It does have to work against the force of that spring, but it shouldn't be bound up in any way. It should slide quite easily. It is quite a tight, tight fit, and I wouldn't recommend putting any sort of lubricant or grease on this. It should be reassembled dry, but it should slide quite easily through that solenoid. With the plunger removed, we can look into the solenoid. At the base of the solenoid there, there's a switch. When the solenoid's fully engaged, it draws that plunger down, and that plunger will make contact with that switch. When that switch is pressed, there's continuity between those two terminal posts. It's these two terminal posts that then make the switch to provide current to go into the starter motor. So thinking here about the operation of the solenoid, it moves that plunger that moves the pinion out that engages it into the teeth of the flywheel. The second thing is, is it activates that switch to allow current to flow to the starter motor. Continuing with the disassembly, you want to remove the cover that sits over the end of the shaft of the starter motor. It's typically a couple of screws and the little cover will come off. Once this cover's off, you'll see that the shaft has a circlip or a C-clip that secures it together. There'll be a little bit greasy here, but there is a circlip underneath that grease and it pulls out quite easily. Then draw your attention to the bolts that are on the end of the starter motor. These bolts will need to be removed to continue the disassembly process. They're typically about an eight or a nine mil bolt head on them but they're a very long bolt because they go right through the starter motor and secure it into the housing. With the bolts removed, we can now separate the starter motor from the alloy housing. Take particular note of this rubber block or plastic block that sits in underneath the solenoid. You can see the way it sits by the impression that the solenoid has left upon it. It needs to be reinstalled back in the same way to make sure everything's working correctly. Also note when you separate this, go slow because a few parts typically drop out and you need to put them back in the right order. With the housing out of the way, it gives us the opportunity to examine the plastic lever and pivot point that connected the pinion to the plunger. We need to make sure that this operated smoothly, there was no cracks or damage, 
and that the pivot point was in good condition. Looking now at the other end of the motor, we've got the cap here where the brushes sit. This needed a little bit of tapping just to release it. Once it came out, I would suggest that you go very slowly pulling this out and try and hold it all together, otherwise the brushes will fall out. Carefully pulling the brushes away here from the commentator, we can now inspect the commentator for its condition. These sometimes can get quite worn or damaged, um, but this one's in reasonably good condition, just needs a little bit of a clean up. To ensure the best possible operation, I suggest that you get some wet and dry sandpaper and just give this a, a light sanding. You want quite a fine grade because you don't want to be digging into it too much. You just want to remove some of that surface corrosion or dirt or arcing where the brushes have been running along here. You also want to make sure that those grooves in between those are quite clear and still evident. If there's quite bad scoring in the commentator, like this one here, it's time to get a new starter motor. Running on the surface of the commentator is a set of brushes. These can wear down quite considerably as well. I've got a picture here just for your reference of a new one versus an old one. I think at this point it's important to show you a starter motor actually operating. I've set one up here using a power pack to power it. It's sitting in an old Volkswagen Golf automatic transmission casing just to hold it secure. Now remembering, this is the solenoid at the top. Here's the starter motor underneath. Now initially here, I just want to show you the solenoid operating without the starter motor operating. This means we should see the pinion move, but I've had to disconnect the heavy duty cabling that goes to the starter motor here, just so we can watch the solenoid's operation. Looking now at the pinion as I cycle the power on and off, we can see it engaging and disengaging perfectly. Now with the heavy duty electrical cable reconnected, we can see the starter motor in action. As I cycle the power to the solenoid, you can see that it moves the pinion forward, engages that switch that it was at the back of the plunger, creating a circuit to the starter motor, spinning the starter motor, and obviously then turning the flywheel and starting your car. So look, that's a super brief overview of the operation of a starter motor. So now you know what happens when you do this. For those of you who are on Instagram, you may have come across my Kilowatt Garage Instagram page. I started this only about two months ago. Currently have 1,338 followers, which is absolutely amazing. I recently put a call out for my followers to come and join me on YouTube and Shoebox Teddy and Spencer responded to that call. They took my YouTube subscriptions into the triple figures, which is absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you put any comments below, any questions below, and don't forget to subscribe.